me, one of the easiest ways for me to explain it to you is in a biscuit. Okay, this is white lily, well this is Pillsbury flour. This is a national brand, Pillsbury all-purpose flour. This flour is sold all over America. You can go anywhere, it's a national brand. Nothing wrong with this flour at all. You use it all the time if it's on sale, because honestly I pick up which one is on sale. Sometimes it's this, sometimes it's a different one. Um, this is generic tasting. It just tastes like flour. Your, your things aren't gonna taste any better or any worse or any different because it's just flour. Um, now, White Lily, on the other hand, White Lily, it's changed hands, but it stayed relatively the same. It's made out of a, a different type of wheat, and, a, and I may be wrong. You guys can Google it and research and let me know, but I, I think it's hard winter wheat it's made out of. It's milled finer and to a different specification. This is closer, White Lily, if you buy the all-purpose or if you buy self-rising, which I tend to buy self-rising and all-purpose, but I use more self-rising because here in the South, there's a lot of products we make, things like flour bread biscuits, um, a lot of cakes, I just go ahead and use the self-rising. I, I just use the self-rising. But the difference in White Lily is it's closer to a pastry flour. I know you've been in the grocery store and you've seen the boxes of like Swan's Down cake and pastry flour. That's what they call a short flour. It makes a short dough. Whereas a, a regular dough, like a regular flour like this, just all purpose, is like a standard it's it's not short it's like a standard flour it doesn't have any leaven in, in it to make it rise but the products that you make out of it will be denser right now if you're going to make bread you have to buy a bread flour sometimes bread recipes will call for regular all-purpose flour mixed with bread flour which bread flour tends to be high gluten which means the more you touch it and knead it it forms strands that pull sort of like cell structures, and that's what gives it that spring and that bounce, and when it bakes, that's what gives it those big air bubbles inside of it. Those flours would be too tough to make a biscuit. So if I tried to make a biscuit out of a bread flour, it'd be like a rock. It would get so hard. I make it out of this white lily flour, it's gonna be like a cloud. If you can make a biscuit out of white lily and barely touch it, it's gonna rise up, it's gonna be like a cloud, it's going to be very, very light. Um, and so that's why a lot of people choose this or they choose Southern Biscuit. There's several that are, are very light, almost short flowers. Um, I have been, since I've moved to South Carolina, because I'm a local person, this is a 25 pound bag. I buy Adlu. Adlu is from Columbia, South Carolina. I tell you a little bit of history about it. Out of, in 1943, I think, their website says there were, they were something like almost 50, 45 or so mills in South Carolina that produced flour, and now they are the last one remaining. They're the last place in South Carolina that does their own flour. They also do cornmeal. Um, I can buy this locally. It's a local South Carolina product. The other great thing about Adlu, all their grains are local grains. They contract with farmers within a hundred mile radius of Columbia to grow their grains for them. And they don't depend on companies like Monsanto and ADM and all these big grain companies to get their grains. So even though it may not be certified organic, it's local, it tastes like this area. If I make a biscuit out of Adlu, it tastes like biscuits I had when I was a kid growing up because the flour was different back then because we didn't have the predominance that we have now of these big companies um, that produce these grains, right? So you may have heard your mother and your grandmother and people talk and say, well, I, you know, I can make a cake, but it doesn't taste like the cake I had when I was growing up. Or I cook this, but it doesn't taste like it. You have to take into account your food has changed, right? The, the flour isn't the same flour that you had when you were a child and you were growing up in the 70s and the 80s. It is just not the same flour. There's a different product altogether in that bag that's still labeled flour and you still think it's the same thing. Well, it's not. This gets you back to that, which is why I, um, I use it. I keep this flour, believe it or not, this bucket right here, 
says self rising flower on it holds one of these whole bags i'm almost down to the bottom so i'm gonna switch this out here really soon and get this flower put in it but um anyway that's the reason why i suggest to you guys to to look for local things it's going to taste like grandma made it's going to take you back and remind you of of things um like grandma made or like what you had when you were growing up and you're like well i haven't tasted that in years or i can't get back to that part of the reason is you got to find food products that are made the same as they were 30 or 40 years ago that takes a little bit of legwork um now i'm going to get onto something right here rice and this gets a little more complicated and we're actually going to make a pot of rice today and that's the only thing i'm cooking for you today is a pot of rice we're going to do that and show you how how i do it um because i think it's important a lot of people can't do it and don't understand rice and so we want to go through that but i wanted to talk about going back i briefly mentioned when we were talking about cornmeal over here this 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 um actually these grits that i like I like the yellow grits. All of these products have something in common. If we look at food history, they all have something in common. They're all white products. Somewhere around the turn of the century, around the 1900s, when we were going out of the Victorian era, sort of into the machine age, and things were getting more mechanized and what have you, um, previous to that, very refined foods, foods that were highly processed, were typically put into the realm of people with money. So if you had money, you could get white flour. If you had money, you could get white sugar. Everything meant, because every step that they had to do to refine that product and make it more, more refined, more, which typically meant wider, um, because a lot of times they were they were stripping out things and making taking the holes and the outer coatings and the shells off things which meant that you were getting down to the essence of the food which typically it was white so there was a craze for white food at that area now i'm not talking about racially white i'm talking about the color white having things white if you set a table in the late victorian period and you were able to showcase a lot of white food that showed your your place in society i mean you just had money and you were able to buy that because a lot of people had to eat gray food and brown food and food that wasn't processed all the way and they sweetened things with sugar that was more like our brown sugar so it never got white so if they made a beautiful wedding cake it still was like a golden color on the inside it wasn't white cake you know because of, of what the products that they were using so there, there's just this stigma that we're not taught about now in modern times of how we came to prefer white foods. Um, you go back a little further when the New World was discovered and they brought tomatoes over to Europe, a lot of people wouldn't eat the tomatoes because they were red and they associated red with death and with like scary, it was passion, it was all these bad things. And they just wouldn't eat it because they were afraid of it. And white is sort of on the other side of that. White always sort of show, it was always sort of safe, right? Like people thought, well, it's white. It, it's, it's healthy for you. It's good for you. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to make you sick, whatever. And then along with the health benefits, it got paired up with the, with the social aspect of it was if I can eat white food, I've got money. And so today we still pick white foods from this notion that's been passed down generation after generation and we don't know why we're picking the white foods and we don't know why we like them but we know that we like them so we'll we'll go for white flour instead of whole wheat flour we'll go for white rice instead of brown rice we'll go for you know a a, a, a white pasta instead of like one of the durham like not durham wheat but one of the um the darker like whole wheat pastas you know, a lot of people go for white grits instead of yellow grits. They don't want the yellow grits. They only want the white grits. So this preference for white things, white, 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 um, there's nothing wrong with it. All those foods are great. I'm just telling you that there's a whole world of other things that have a lot more flavor that may not be those colors. Um, and hopefully this is kind of like getting you guys to think about it. So this brings us to rice. 
along those same terms um, of of um, social of, of the social aspect of foods, we get to this company. I've got this in a bag right here. This is Charleston Gold. This Carolina Rice Company. If you get online and you Google um, Carolina Gold Rice, Carolina Gold, not Charleston Gold. I'm going to explain to you the difference. I don't have a bag of Carolina Gold here because I eat it up as fast as I can get it. Now I'm going to tell you something about this rice. This rice is expensive. It is gold. It is almost $10 a bag. I can buy it at my local food line in the local product section, but they're also here locally in Charleston and there's a company in Darlington that processes it. It's a crop that they're growing. It was re-engineered. A gentleman out of Charleston. It is the rice that built the South and this part of America. It is the South rice that built South Carolina. It is the rice that was brought here. And the reason why all the African slaves were brought over because they knew how to grow it. And they brought this rice in their pockets. Um, not the Charleston gold, but the Carolina gold. Um, if you're gonna make anything that's dependent on rice, like like I would say tomatoes and rice, if you wanted to make a dish like that, or if you wanted to make like stewed beef and rice, or anything where you just wanted to taste the rice, if you wanna do a great chicken bog, or, or just anything that's just like rice, do yourself a favor and pay $10 and buy yourself a bag of Carolina Gold when it's available again. They're sold out this year. I think the crop should be coming in here. They'll freeze as much as they can and they'll keep it 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 is so good you guys you think rice don't taste like anything that rice is so good this rice is good this is the same this is a heritage rice also but this is an asian rice the, the charleston gold is based off of i think it's a jasmine rice so it has that herbally like flavor to it it has like a floral herbally taste to it also equally fantastic but the carolina gold Oh my God, this is going to take it to a different level. Um, I don't have a bag to show you guys of the rice that I grew up eating because I've just stopped buying it. Um, and it's Uncle Ben's. Um, Uncle Ben's converted rice. Had it three, four times a week my entire life growing up. Only kind of rice my mom ever cooked. Only kind I ever bought for years. Didn't know any better. I want to talk to you guys about processing food and getting foods white. Um, Uncle Ben's, along with several of the other companies, this company, this is a blue ribbon one. This says extra long grain enriched rice. So there's two code words that you look for in rice. You look for the code word enriched and you look for the code word parboiled and you look for the code word converted. <laughs> three, three code words, parboiled parboiled, converted, or um, enriched. What this means is these companies don't want you to cook their rice and have it come out sticky. They have washed every bit of starch out of the rice at the factory, multiple times of rinsing, washing the rice, pouring off the water, rinsing, washing the rice, pouring off the water. They parboil it, which means they cook it partially they rinse it again, they pour off that water and strain it. They rinse it again, they pour off that water and strain it. They dry out the rice that's already been, already previously cooked. It's dried out. Okay, now, this rice has been washed before it was cooked, cooked and washed again. There's nothing else in that rice that tastes good or that's beneficial for your body. They've stripped it of every nutrient and every bit of flavor it's got. So what do they do? They've got to, this word, they're telling you on the bag what they've done to it. We have enriched it, which means we're going to send it under a sprayer, and it's a conveyor belt, and it's going to spray vitamins and minerals and flavor back onto the rice. And it's going to get stirred up, and it's going to go through another set of um, sprayers. And then they're going to spread it all out flat, and it's going to dry, and then they're going to put it in a bag. And your instructions, I like to lovingly call them destructions when you, when you get to the bag. It says right here, 
in this section it says to prevent to to retain vitamins do not rinse before or drain after cooking they want you to cook a perfect pot of rice and eat it because if you get rid of any of the water in it you wash away every bit of nutritional value that it has and every bit of taste it has and so now there's nothing wrong with this rice the bag's almost empty um, I use it I use the gold one. I've got a bag of gold over here that, that I use. The gold one is better to me than this one, but, but I use these. Um, so that's one thing that you've got to pay attention to when you're buying rice. Are you buying a converted, a parboiled rice, or are you buying just a rice? Okay. Again, me and my clearance tags on it. I buy all these products around here because nobody will touch them. They don't know what they are. And um, I lived all over the United States and I luckily, thank God, I've been exposed to a lot of things so I know. I love jasmine rice. Jasmine rice is in this same family here, this Carolina Gold. Same family of rices, although this one's been bred to grow in America from an Asian rice. And this one actually comes from Asia. Um, these rices have to be washed and rinsed because they are raw rice nothing's been done to them nothing's been done to this one nothing's been done to this one they have not been parboiled they do not have um vitamins and minerals spread back into them they are just rice and so to cook these rices you have to wash them first and you want to get off all that starch because the starch that's all over it is what causes it to clump together and stick and that's what these big companies are trying to avoid you know, they, they think, oh, modern housewife, you don't have time. You don't, you don't want to do all these extra steps. You want to just get rice to your family and everybody be happy. So they make it really easy. Well, it's really easy, but it doesn't taste like anything and it's not good for your body. So everything's about choices. But anyway, we're going to cook some of this rice today. And I'll go through that in a second. I'm almost finished here. I just am going to do one more thing with you guys, which I feel like is important for um a southern table and i'm going to include it and that's syrup um i grew up eating one called cane patch this one's called cane field it's just recently appeared it's in all the stores um i'm just going to grab my glasses again because i wanted to read for you but the problem with the new one is it's not true cane syrup it's not made out of ribbon cane or or seed cane which is actually sorghum not syrup but um, if it's ribbon cane, which is where you plant the entire thing and the cane comes up, that's, that's cane, cane syrup. That's what you squeeze to get this. This is made with corn syrup. So it's got a little bit of cane syrup in it and a lot of um, corn syrup. Um, I'm showing you this product because this product, I gotta get my glasses because I can't read it and I can't tell you. The reason why I buy it for pancake syrup is it says no high fructose corn syrup and you look on the back well i'm lying to you i look on the back and it does say corn syrup and water and then sugar is the next ingredient it, no high fructose corn syrup i just vetoed this one off the island guys i was buying it because i thought it didn't have corn syrup in it so I have just discovered myself to be wrong, so that just got voted off the island. I'll finish eating it, but I won't ever bite it again. Um, we got plain old dark maple syrup. I was say, trying to eat the maple syrup, trying to eat something real. Stay away from that corn syrup or high fructose corn syrup. They are both horrible for you, and they, they kill the taste of things. They just don't taste good. And I was eating that because I thought it was better, but oh no. My favorite, dad used to make cane syrup growing up. And um, he, we would, every Thanksgiving, we would process the cane. We'd squeeze it at the cane mill and get the juice out. And dad would boil it all day and, and concentrate it down into a thick syrup. And it was all strained and we put it in jars. And anyway, that's what I grew up eating. This is the closest thing I've found to it. Um, and a lot of people use blackstrap molasses. I like blackstrap molasses. I don't have any here to show you. I like cane syrup. It's a little bit milder, milder, not milder. It's a little milder, milder tasting. It doesn't have that harsh and it doesn't tickle the back of your throat. Have you guys ever eaten it and it, it, it scratches the back of your throat and you eat it and you go, <clears throat> it kind of 
kind of gets to the back. Um, this one won't do that so bad. Sometimes it'll do it if you swallow it wrong. But anyway, this comes out of Louisiana. It's small batch made. I order it by the case, essentially. Um, it's not the cheapest thing you're ever gonna buy, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. Absolutely worth it. So try to just stay away from that high fructose corn syrup if you can.